Hey everyone and welcome back. Last time we talked about just the different types of properties that uh, Figma Smart Anime actually supports. That being scale, position, opacity, rotation, and fill. Now I'm gonna show you a couple of different prototype examples of that actually being used, I guess you could say in real life examples. Let me show you the different types of ways you can basically use Smart Anime. So over here we have a little transition uh, built and the goal here is to, when you click this card, it will show this option and then we can click that to delete it and then this uh, portion will kind of animate upwards. Think about if you had maybe like a mailbox and you uh, wanted to delete one of your mail items or like one of those cards and uh, once you do that, the rest of the cards kind of just push upwards. That's essentially what we're building here right now. So the way to do that is you need to create three different screens for this type of animation. That's what I've gone ahead and done. And if we just click on our prototype tab that we have here, so uh, we've already done that. I'm just going to click this screen just to show you uh, what I've done. So I've selected this object. So it's called rectangle 17 over here, and it's going to match this one here that's also called rectangle 17. So naming conventions are very important with smart anime because if this was named something else, nothing would necessarily happen. So we wouldn't get like a fill animation when that changes and we wouldn't also get it to disappear when it removes itself from this screen as well. So what I've done here is I've just taken this uh, prototype node and connected it to this screen and I've selected on tap navigate to this screen. So it's just called transition. I know poor naming, but it, it's just for the sake of uh, an example. And out of my animation menu, you can select instant, you can select dissolve, but what we wanna do is we wanna select smart animate. And that's what we've done. So we have smart animate selected over here and you can uh, select the easing you can do ease out, ease in, you can do linear. I find linear looks kind of fake. Uh, when we actually design animations and just different type of motion in general, gravity also kind of applies. Uh, you need to think about how things kind of gently kind of ease in or how gently they ease out. And if things are way too linear, it kind of looks fake. I like to kind of just apply one of these to it, you know, see what works for you. I have ease out in this instance. So that's what I have applied. And then you can apply the animation duration over here. So I have it set to 500 milliseconds. I feel like that's pretty good, um, just a time in general. You don't want to have something that is too quick or something that's too slow. I think the optimal speed is in around like 200 to 500 milliseconds. Stay within that kind of limit for these types of animations. You just don't want to keep your users waiting. So let's see what this looks like. Let's go right to our prototype. So we're just going to press R to restart. So I can see my hotspot right there and this is what's going to happen. So we just have a fill. That's it. So I've clicked this and that card has been highlighted in some way. Let's jump back. And the next animation is I'm going to click that same object and I'm going to attach it to this screen. And now it's the same thing that I have here. I have animate, smart animate as my animation. I have the ease out and I have 500 milliseconds as my duration. And this actually would not appear on this screen at all. So I don't have a rectangle 17 as you can see. So let's see what that all looks like together. So I'm going to click, I'm going to click it again. And there you go, simple transition. If you provide enough content for something like this, it will look really nice. So if you actually create cards that have content that's relative to what you're doing, not just black blocks like I have, but that's just the easiest way to make this type of animation. Now let's go back. What I'm gonna do is I'm just going to drag this over here. So I have this. Now, another thing that you can do is instead of actually just using smart animate, you can use a different type of animation, like a push. Let me just uh, click that. So let me show you what this looks like. So you can have a push animation. 
that's nice. I mean, we're already thinking about screen transitions, but the problem is that you see the navigation moves and everything kind of moves, like even the title and that kind of stuff shouldn't necessarily move in our instance. I mean, the title may move in another application or yeah, another example, but the navigation always stay the same. So this is how we keep the navigation in its place or any other layers in their place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that same animation. I have that also selected here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let me remove this. We're going to actually start from scratch. So I'm going to actually just select this navigation item. And I'm just going to attach it to the screen. And I'm going to not click smart animate, but I'm going to click push. I'm going to leave the, the easing the same way. I'm going to leave the duration the same way. And I can see a little kind of a preview of what that animation looks like. So I have uh, my second screen as B coming in and pushing out screen A. If I wanted to, I can have something similar like that where it just kind of overlays, but let's just uh, stick to push for now. And you'll notice this option here that says smart animate matching layers. And what that means is all the layers with the same name will be animated within this entire animation that we're building out here. So let me show you what that means. So I've clicked that. So you can see animate layers with the same name instead of using the transition above. Instead of having the navigation being pushed out of the frame, it will just animate to whatever is over here. So let's see, we have a couple of things going on. So we have this, it's called rectangle 15. We have this ellipse four, yeah. And this is ellipse four as well. So we'll, we're gonna see these different things animate. And I even think I made this square over here the same as well. So rectangle 16, rectangle 16. So let's take a look at what that animation looks like after we just connect this third screen. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna push it over there. Let's match our easing. So I have 500 milliseconds. And on this one, I'm going to have 500 milliseconds. Perfect. And this will link back there. And see, now it's starting to just kind of grab the exact same animations that I have applied earlier. So that makes things so easy. I love that Figma does this. This looks pretty complicated, but this is our flow. Let's take a look at what it looks like. So we're gonna just go play that. Okay. So we'll see right now, we don't have a push in or a push out, but we have things animating. You'll even notice the little kind of micro interactions and we're gonna get into that in more detail later, but we can see that things are staying put where we want them. So let's take another look. And what we're gonna do here is we're actually gonna rename this to, um, We'll call it square two and we'll call this circle three and we'll just call this square one. So that way we will actually get um, some sort of animation. So we will we'll just call this square. We'll call this rounded square and we'll call this a circle. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna name these I'm going to select them all. I'm going to select command R to rename, and I'm just going to say text and a number. So that way they'll all be different and perfect. Actually, that looks good. And let's see what that animation looks like now. So it should update within there. Let's just restart. So now we actually get actual like animation of the screen changing while we keep our navigation the same. So really cool little animation we got here. So we can actually go in and make these changes where we need to in terms of uh, how that animation looks. I'm talking more so about the little details of how things slide in and slide out. We just want to keep that kind of stuff consistent because everything constantly swipes in from the right. Uh, and when you're switching between navigation items, uh, it gets a little confusing, but that is essentially how you keep things in place while you are actually switching items on a screen. So let's go even further down and we're gonna kind of put these two examples together. So we have a screen here. 
let's actually just delete that. Perfect. What do we have here? So this is going to be okay. That's that's good. So that's just going to smart animate. And what we're going to have is we're going to have the navigation stay in place, but we're going to have that same kind of card and we're going to actually have a drag. So what happens here is after a delay, so this is uh, to mimic like a mailbox once again. So I'm going to proceed to this screen and I've selected over here and I've selected after delay as my interaction. So after one second or a thousand milliseconds, we're going to navigate to this screen. So that means we're going to have an item pop up at the top and everything's going to animate down. So we have it selected as an, uh, a smart animation. So kind of like what's happening here. And then what we're going to do is we are going to uh, drag. So on drag to left, we're going to smart animate as well. We are going to drag this delete button in from the right. And once we do that, after a delay, after we've deleted, we will remove this item and the rest of the cards will jump up. So let's see what this all looks like together. So I'm going to play. So all I'm going to do is click this. There's our item. So if you didn't catch that, let's do it one more time. So I'm going to click and let's wait for that delay and an item should pop up from the top. There it is. And now I can see that I can click this item. And the great thing about uh, Figma is it, it kind of notices when you're like 50% of the way. So if I release over here, that delete will just slide. But if I release over here, it'll just go back. So we can make some really nice uh, micro interactions and animations like this. I'm just going to swipe it and then we're going to wait for the other delay, which will actually delete the item. So I'm going to swipe delete and it's gone. Now we can go in and say, okay, that, uh, that took a little too long for our actual animation. So let's go back. So we have our swipe and it should be much quicker. So we can even go even further. Let's do that again. And let's go to 200 milliseconds because I think once you uh, delete something it should be pretty instantaneous. So let's go through that animation. Boom, that's beautiful. I'm going to delete that and it's gone. So I mean, we could probably even trim that down a bit more, but let's do it one more time. Let me see what it looks like. Nice slide delete and everything kind of pushes its way back up. So this is a great way for you to prototype different types of animations in the application that you may have um, with smart animate. You don't even need to leave Figma. You can just create pages of different types of interactions. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily go ahead and create one massive prototype with all these different like animations and micro interactions. Don't go ahead and do that. It's going to take you so long to just put together. And I mean, if you change one thing, then you may have to go back and rework. What I typically do is if I have a, like an interaction just like this that I want to showcase, I'll make a new page for it and I'll just stick to this one page and I'll have whatever screens I need and different variations of those screens in order for me to actually go ahead and uh, present that to whoever I'm presenting it to, whether that be uh, the product team I'm on, whether that be clients, Keep things separated, keep them clean. Don't go out making crazy animations like that. In our next video, I'm gonna show you how I applied Smart Animate to that, that other app I built over here. So I'll show you all the different things that I did to kind of put this together and make things look really realistic in terms of motion and animation. So uh, stay tuned, let's jump into our next video and I'll show you how I did that.